My name is Yasser, I'm a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice and a specialist infectious disease pharmacist working for the NHS in the UK. I thought it'd be interesting to go through my expenses on a day-to-day -day basis as a pharmacist. I think generally people find these videos interesting. It gives them an idea of expenses to take into consideration. So the first thing that I'll go through is the fact that I make my morning coffee at home. I invested £430 into this coffee machine. It's the Sage Barista Express. And it's something that I've been using for the past four or five years. I think about four and a half years I've owned the coffee machine. I make my daily coffees at home. I try to stick to having one coffee a day. I'll go through my lunch, which also includes some caffeine. I'll go through that in a bit more detail later on. But I make my morning coffee every day and I've been doing this for about four and a half years now. And it has really changed the amount of expenses that I have when it comes to coffee. Coffee roughly costs me about three pounds for a flat white, which is what I normally drink. And I can make that at home and it tastes just as good. So the reason for this is I purchase my coffee beans from the same shops that the coffee shops that I use purchase their coffee beans from. So it's the same roasteries. I get it sent to my house and it costs me £7.50 for a bag that lasts me approximately two weeks. So roughly speaking, the coffee at home cost me about 30 pence, which is a fraction of the price that I'd spend if I bought that coffee from a coffee shop. So I'm not gonna calculate the price of the coffee and the benefits of spending 400 pounds on a coffee machine, but you can already see the benefits of making your coffee at home. I know there's a lot of people out there that feel like instant coffee tastes exactly the same as barista made coffee. I don't feel like that. I have a strong passion for good coffee. So if it's something that you can live without, if it's something that doesn't make a difference whether or not it's Nescafe or barista made coffee, then stick to that. Um, it's something that I'm pretty passionate about and that's why I make Barista made coffee at home. So my first expense is car parking. I park my car at the train station. I don't use the train station car park because that's a lot more expensive than the car park close by to the train station and I spend five pounds for the entire day. This saves me from either walking to the train station, which takes 45 minutes, as opposed to a seven minute car journey, and catching a bus to the train station, which again takes about 25 minutes rather than the seven minute car journey. It also means that if I'm taking my car, that expense of five pounds is cheaper than buying two bus fares to and from the station, which takes me a fraction of the time. So that's five pounds for a 12 hour period, which I think is a fair price for the car park. I then take a train journey to Nottingham, which is approximately 30 to 35 miles away from my home, which saves me from the car journey. The reason why I take the train rather than driving up to Nottingham saves me from the car journey. It means that I can do more productive things on the train journey rather than spending that time in the car. I also found that it really improves my productivity when it comes to the stuff with regards to microphone because I can plan and schedule posts on the train journey rather than doing that when I come home. So the train journey to get to Nottingham and back from Nottingham cost me 12 pounds. So that's six pounds each way. Again, very reasonably priced considering that if you got individual tickets, it'd be 10 to 15 pounds. The reason for this is two reasons. One, you're buying a return ticket, so you're buying both ways, so that generally comes out cheaper. And the fact that I use a rail card. So the rail card costs about 30 pounds for the entire year, but it gives you a 33% discount for all tickets or most tickets. So that means that I save a lot of money just by having a rail card. So the total now is 17 pounds. And then for lunch, I will have something that's called Y food. It's really a meal in a bottle. I don't know much about a dietitian's perspective to something like Y food, but I do know that it's very convenient for me because it keeps me full for the entire day. And it's coffee flavored, so it actually includes some caffeine in that. And that cost me two pounds 50 for the bottle, but it has the same nutrients that you'd have from a lunchtime meal, for example. So it has about 35 grams of carbs, 34 grams of protein, and 20 grams of fat. So it includes a lot of my macros for the day, it keeps me full for the entire day, and it's a lot more convenient than having to look for different ways in which I can obtain protein from my food, from meal deals, and it saves me a lot of time because I bulk buy them. So that cost me £2.50 for my lunch. Then I have to take two buses 
from the train station to the hospital. So this roughly takes about 30 minutes. From a time perspective, it takes me about an hour and 20 or an hour and 30 minutes to get from my house to work. And in total, I have to take four buses in Nottingham. Now, I figured out that you can actually buy a pass that gives you 100 days in advance and that works out to £2.90 for the day rather than spending £4.40 every day if you're purchasing your day ticket every day. So I purchased my tickets in advance and that means that I spend £2.90. So for the travel, the parking at the station, the train journey and the buses that I take within Nottingham all come up to £19.90 and then I spend £2.50 for lunch. This brings a lot of very good questions that people ask me and that is why would you travel for an hour and a half to work and an hour and a half back from work which is three hours a day? Very valid question. So there's two reasons for this. The current contract that I have is a temporary contract with the hospital to lead the infectious disease department. I wanted to develop my leadership skills. I wanted to say on my CV that I have had the experience of leading a particular department, which is something that I previously haven't done in my pharmacy career. So I was very keen on doing that. I was also very keen on the fact that it's a temporary contract. So I'm not bound by that decision like you would with more permanent roles. And that means that my notice period is one week rather than four months. Interestingly enough, I enjoy this role a lot more than previous roles I've worked in. So I'm actually more keen to do long-term work with the current trust that I'm working for. So I developed experience of leading a particular specialty in a particular pharmacy department. I developed my skills in terms of infectious diseases and HIV. And the other thing is the fact that as it comes as a locum contract, you get paid more than having a permanent contract. Of course, there are all the cons of having a locum contract, meaning unpaid holiday, unpaid sick leave. Also the fact that it may be difficult for you to have access to educational funds or educational sponsorships for going to conferences and training. So there are cons with a locum contract. Bearing in mind, this is something that would probably be short term, six to nine months. We haven't really set a time on it, but it's a short term contract where I can develop my skills leading a particular speciality and also be paid more than I would be paid in a permanent contract. Is traveling three hours a day and commuting three hours a day sustainable long term? I wouldn't say that it's sustainable long term. I think there's a lot of considerations that you need to think about before you take on a role like this. I would say that it's not so bad if you are not driving every day and you're utilizing your time more wisely but there are still a lot of considerations when it comes to commuting. I think it deserves a lot more discussion than it currently receives and you have to consider your work-life balance. I should cover that in a later video. If that's something that you find interesting then let me know in the comments section below. How much do you spend on a day-to-day -day basis if you're working as a pharmacist? Let me know in the comments section below. If you did find this video like the video and subscribe and I will be back with more videos every week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.